Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Living in Canada. Today in this video, I want to talk about the fastest way to get a job here. And for that, I'm going to give you two tips. You watching right now might have clicked on this video because you're at a time, at a stage where you are looking for a job. It could be a permanent job or perhaps just a temporary job, a customer service job and so on. And perhaps you filled out some applications online, you've submitted your application, but you haven't really heard back from anyone. Or you might also be someone who is still overseas, but you're planning to come to Canada in near time or some time in the future. And you're just wondering, you just want to have a general idea about the things that you might need to do once you're here to get a job as fast as possible. But before I continue, if you don't want to miss out on any of my future uploads, then make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. And also very important, make sure that the notification bell is turned on to all notifications because only if you do will YouTube actually notify you each time there's a new upload from me. So let's get straight into the first tip, which is to get referred. So what does it mean to get referred it basically means that either a friend uh, an ex-colleague an acquaintance or sometimes even a family member refers you to his or her employer or ex-employer for a specific job and I will actually share with you three of my own experiences and my family's experiences with this with getting referred and in many cases this works wonders and this is the reason why on a daily basis, there are so many people applying for one and the same job. So the recruiter, the employer gets uh, hundreds, sometimes even more applications on their desk or in their application system on their computer. And they need to sift and sort through all of those. And sometimes things can get stuck there, right? Because there are so many applications and they have to look through all of them and they have to pick who to interview next and so on. But if all of a sudden uh, this employer or recruiter hears from his or her acquaintance or friend um, or, or colleague that um, that person knows someone who might be excellent, suitable for the job, and that person is you, then you can, in many cases, suddenly be pushed to the front of that application stack and be called in for an interview. But of course, this does not always work this way, depending on the company, on their HR and everything. It, it can work in different ways. But personally, I had many experiences uh, myself and also my family members where getting referred actually worked. And I, I heard this from many people countless of times that getting referred is oftentimes the fastest and most effective way if you want to get a job. Of course, it does not work as well for specific jobs because if you are looking for a very specific job, let's say that you want to become the marketing manager at BMW, let's say. It's a very specific job and chances that you know someone who works there or worked there and has, um, uh, has a relationship with someone there is perhaps pretty small so you might need to just go the regular route but anyways i'll talk more about that those specific cases in another uh, video in the future but here let's just talk about very general cases so the cases where you are just looking for a job to gain experience uh, or um, you just need to earn some additional money or you're in between jobs or whatever so in this case it, it is not that big of a deal to you what the job is. You, you just need the job as fast as possible. That's the main point. So in this case, like I said before, refer, uh, refer, referrals work very, very well. And now I'm going to share with you three experiences that um, I have and my family members have, which might be useful and insightful to you. So the first one is the time when I got a job as a YouTube channel manager. I wasn't actively looking for that kind of job at that time, but I was looking for a job that was flexible, that I could do remotely. And yeah, I told my, I told my friends, my husband, that I was looking for a job. And it was such a big coincidence that at that time, um, um, a fellow student, of my husband who was studying together with him at that time. She was working at a company and they were looking for a YouTube channel manager who could also speak 
Indonesian and had project management experience and had um, experience with YouTube. And that was so me. It was like the perfect combination. I was asked to contact the hiring manager um, the next day. So right the next day, I got an interview. And a few days later, I actually got, got the job. So this would not have been possible had I not used the power of networking and referrals. So this is something that you can definitely do. So go and tell your friends, your acquaintances, actively tell them that you are looking for, for a job. You can tell them more or less what kind of job um, you're looking for and if whether or not you have any specific criteria and so. But I think I would advise you to just uh, stay open because if you uh, make the criteria too specific and narrow, then it might discourage them your, your friends and acquaintances from referring you for a job because they might think that, oh, so-and-so, you might not be really interested in that, so they might not mention it to you and so on. So it's a good idea to just stay open so that you get access to all of the information about the jobs that are open in the first place. Now let's go on to the second job, which I also got through a referral. So this was a job that I had very early in the beginning when I just arrived here in Canada and I was just looking for any uh, customer service job. And I ended up getting a customer service slash sales representative job at a furniture store store at a relatively high-end furniture store and I got this job again through a friend so I was in between jobs and I was looking for a job just something to gain experience from and also earn some money of course and yeah I just talked to my friends again I told them that okay I'm looking for for a job I don't have a very specific criteria I just want something fast and then this friend who was herself working at this furniture store at that time referred me for a job there because someone had just quit their job there and they were looking for another sales representative but just imagine if I had not mentioned to her at all that I was on job search then I think the possibility would be close to zero that she would have mentioned that job to me because if I didn't tell her my intention that, okay, I want, I want to have this and this job as fast as possible, then she might not even bother to tell me about the opening. But because I did, in the end, she ended up referring me. And it was almost the same case again. Within a few days, I got a phone interview and then um, two days, about two days after I went into the store, I talked with the manager and the next day, boom, I was hired. It was so fast. It was about within a week. The third example that I have here, and this is quite interesting, um, is something that my husband experienced. So my husband started working at this one company and he had a very nice helpful and supportive manager. He was in accounting, by the way, and worked there for about over a year. But then the pandemic hit and everything, and he lost his job. He lost the job just for a while because shortly after he got another even better job at another company also in accounting. And at that time, someone else also quit their job and they were looking for another accountant. And of course, the first person that my husband thought of referring to them was his ex-boss because his ex-boss, he knew that he, uh, he knew that he was very capable, um, highly intelligent, very good at his job. But in addition to that, he also knew that his ex-boss was a very good human being, very reliable, very helpful. So he was the first person that my husband thought of referring. So it was kind of funny that in the end, he was able to refer his ex-boss to the company that he was working for. But things like that happen all the time, guys. And that is why it's so important to really use this method of referral. And it's very easy to do. You simply need to talk to everyone that you know, your friends, your acquaintances, tell them about your intention of looking for a job. And if you're not looking for anything particular, then it's even easier. For example, if you're just looking for a job as customer service or support, then you can just tell them that and um, they'll be on the outlook for you. They might hear during 
lunch or coffee with another friend of their, theirs, they might hear that there's this opening and they're looking for this and this kind of person, perhaps with this specific language skill even. And then they will come back to you and tell you about that job and then chances are very high that you'll get an interview in the next few days. If all this while you never had a problem with your reputation and you, you know yourself well that you are a good and reliable worker and so on, then things will happen very, very fast for you and you never have to be afraid to get a job. Even if you lose a job, um, if you use this method of referral, you will get another job in no time, as long, of course, as you're not too picky about it. And now I want to go on to the second tip, but before I continue, I want to tell you about my other YouTube channels that I have that are also about careers. So this channel, Living in Canada, is more in general about Canada, but if you are someone who is interested in hearing more about how you can develop a fulfilling and meaningful career, tips, advice, strategies around building your, your career, then you might want to check out my other two channels. And I'm going to put the link to those channels in the descriptions below. One is my main channel, Multiple Careers, and the other channel is my podcast, which is the Multiple Careers podcast, which I just started very recently. So I would be really happy and excited to see you over there on my other channels. Now let's go on to the second tip, the second tip for how you can get get a job very fast, oftentimes in a matter of just one or two weeks. But for this tip, tip number two, I'm referring more to customer service jobs. So this is maybe not as suitable to apply if to uh, jobs such as um, manager jobs, executive jobs, and so on. But for customer service jobs, this is perfect. So that means, for example, work working at H&M, at Starbucks, and so on. So talking about Starbucks, this is exactly the experience that I want to share with you. I don't know if you know yet, if I told you yet, but I ha I was a barista for approximately six months, five to six months. So I worked at Starbucks. That was, <laughs> that, th that was an interesting story. So I always wanted to be work as a barista for a while. I mean, it wasn't my career dream, but it was something that I knew that one day if I have the chance I definitely want to do. I want to stand behind the counter and make lattes and cappuccinos and know how it works. And I did it and it was fun, but it was also very, very enlightening because before that I never really had that kind of job. I mean, although I, I've worked in, in restaurants before, but I never worked as, as a barista before and not at Starbucks. And I was amazed how much multitasking they do and how fast they work and how dedicated they are over there making all those drinks. But anyway, I want to talk about the tip. So here at, at Starbucks, I got the job within about two weeks. And the only, the only reason was because I, at the time I applied at the end of the year, close to the uh, Christmas holidays. And that is why there was a bit of a delay. And in the end, it took about two weeks or so, but it was pretty fast. So what I did in the beginning is I went the normal route of filling in my application online. I made a profile and I chose the branch where I wanted to work at and so on. So I, I was a bit disappointed, honestly, because I thought that I would get an answer pretty fast, but it turned out that uh, a few days went by, a week went by and nothing happened. No one contacted me. So I thought maybe there's another way to do this. And what I did was I printed out my resume. I put on some nice clothes by nice. I mean, I mean, neat. So not like not, not joggers or pajamas or so. So put on some neat clothes and then I walked into the branch. I walked into the branch and I approached one of the baristas and I asked, I asked the barista uh, if I could talk to um, their manager. And at that time, on that day, I think the manager was out. So I came back again the next day and I got to meet the manager. And I introduced myself, I said hi, and I told her that I had already submitted an application online, but I had not heard back from anyone, but I have my resume here and I handed my resume in, in a nice folder to um, the branch manager again so she could easily 
look at it without having to open the application and so and she was very delighted she was very happy she actually told me that um, later on when we had the interview she said that um, it really impressed her that I actually came by to say hi so that actually means that that's what it means to go the extra mile you do something that the other applicants don't do just imagine um, there are so many people applying to work there let's say there are hundreds of people who want to work at at that Starbucks and um, it's gonna be really tough for the manager to sort through all of them and yeah they can't they too can get caught up in decision paralysis right like who to invite who might be good who not and so so by coming there to the branch and introducing myself I made it easy for the branch manager for the hiring manager because she had a first impression of me which she liked and she had a first impression of my character and my willingness to go the extra mile to make the extra effort and that's something that's especially important in customer service right you want someone who is friendly who is proactive who goes the extra mile so I got a chance to kind of prove myself very early on and from there things went so smooth after I think only one or two days I got an interview with her I, I met her at the branch again and then I was hired it was very fast and one important thing that I also did was that after the interview I had with her uh, I saw her reaction was positive and everything but after that the next day I, I came back to the branch and I brought a physical thank you card so I actually it was handwritten and I wrote in the thank you card thank you for your time during the interview today and I restated my interest in working for Starbucks working with her and her team so I dropped the card off and later on when I got accepted she also told me that that was something that she appreciated so I was really glad that that worked out and that was also a tip that I then passed on to my husband who at that time was just about to complete his studies his postgrad certificate and he was looking for a job he got an interview and so on and then I also suggested to him to give his hiring um, manager a thank you a thank you card a physical thank you card and yeah, that is something that is a bit debated. Some people think it's necessary or not, but I think if it's possible, if you can do that, then in most cases it will be uh, it will be received positively. Because think of the perspective of the hiring manager; um, they they too are human beings. I mean, even. <laughs> even though they're managers, they're HR people, but they are human beings who want to be noticed and appreciated. So if you do something like that, they do feel it, feel it on a personal level. They feel like, oh, I matter. Like this person really appreciates that I took the time to talk to them and so on. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed the job, of course. I mean, you still have to meet the requirements and you have to be qualified and so on. But let's say that you compared to the other applicants, the other interviewees are more or less on par in terms of skill and capabilities. Um, and if you're working in customer service, then it's likely that I mean, you can do the job, but someone else can do the job, is likely to do the job as well as you could, right? So you need to do something that differentiates you from your competition. And that is one thing that you can do very easily. Go the extra mile by writing a nice thank you note. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope that these two tips were useful to you. Please let me know in the comments if you tried it or if you had similar experiences. I would really love to know what you think about this. Thank you so much for watching and see you again next time.